In this lesson, we will talk about even and odd functions. So I'm going to give you a few definitions of each of these, and then I'll give you some examples, and then we'll go through a few examples together. So first of all, an even function, there's two ways that we can define it. The first one is if you're looking at a graph, an even function is a function whose graph is symmetric around the y-axis. And I'll give you a little visual of that. For example, If you have something that looks like this, where this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, you'll notice that if you were to cut this graph in half right here on the y-axis, you would get the same thing on both sides of it. I know I didn't draw it perfectly, but assuming it was drawn perfectly, you would get the same thing on, the both, on both sides of the y-axis. So that is what we call an even function. We have one other little definition with even function. Um, the other thing is that if a function is even, it's true that for all x in the domain, that f of negative x is equal to f of x. And a little example there. Let's say you have f of x equals the absolute value of x. For that one, if you were to substitute something in for x no, mat no matter what, if it was a negative, you would actually end up getting, because if this is absolute value, you would get a positive x, which is the same thing that we started out with right here. It's the same thing we started with there. So it's f of x. You'll also find that no matter what value you plug in for that x, um, if you, for example, if you take f of negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and that's going to give you the same thing as if you have f of 1, which is the absolute value of 1, that would also give you 1. So this is a little confusing now. Um, we'll do more examples, and we'll also go over it in class. So I would like to now talk about odd functions. And odd functions are going to have graphs that are going to be symmetric around the origin. And remember, the origin is the point zero, zero. So I'll give you a visual example. Right here, I am going to draw the graph of y equals x to the third. So this is symmetric around the origin because, for example, if the point 1, 1 is on the line, that means the point negative 1, negative 1 is also on the line. Also, if the point negative 2, negative 8 is on the line, that means that the point positive 2, positive 8 on, is on the line. So you will have points that correspond to one another that have the exact opposite sign for both the x and the y value. And actually I'm going to go kind of back to the even function for just a second and give you an example with that. Let's say that the point 4, 0 is on the line. Because we're symmetric around the y-axis, we know that the point negative 4, 0 is also going to be on the line. Same thing if you have the point positive 5, positive 1 on the line. We know that the point negative 5, 
positive 1 is also on that curve. So you'll find that with even functions, you will have a cor corresponding value with the, sa the same y value, but opposite sign for the x value. Whereas with odd functions, you'll have corresponding points that have both the x and the y are going to be the same numbers, but exactly opposite signs. And the algebraic way to look at this with functions is that if you have f of negative x, that gives you negative f of x. And I'm going to um, go through that using an example. So, for example, I'm just going to use the one I had up here, which was f of x equals x to the third. If I were to substitute in any negative number, I know that something to the third power would be that thing times itself three times, so it would be negative x times negative x times negative x. And actually, I have three negatives there. When you have a negative times a negative times a negative, and it happens three times, your final answer must be negative. So, so now I know that because my f of x was x to the third, this is the same as negative f of x. So let's do a few more examples now. So for these examples, we want to determine if the function is odd, even, or neither. So for the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in f of negative x. And what we're looking for, if it was odd, we would find that the final answer would be the same as negative f of x. So it would be the stuff that we have um, here, but exactly the opposite signs. If it was either, if it was even, then we would find that our final answer, after we got rid of as many negatives as we could, would be just the exact same thing that we have there, x to the third minus x. So let's check this out. So here we have f of negative x. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute in negative x and do it to the third power. Then we also substitute negative x in here. So negative x to the third, on the last slide, I actually worked this one out. It's going to give me negative x times negative x times negative x. If you multiply three negatives together, it has to give you a negative. x times x times x is going to give you x to the third. Then minus minus x is plus x. So this actually looks slightly promising. There's a few ways that you can think about this. So first thing you need to notice is that this is not the same. If you wanted it to be the same thing as the stuff I just outlined in blue if it was even. Now if it was odd, then you would get negative f of x. And what I mean by that is you would get negative this whole thing. And if you want to simplify this out, that would give you negative x to the third plus x. And that's actually what we got. So therefore, we know that this must be an odd function. So now let's try number two. And for this one, you are going to substitute in g of negative x. And if you want, you can think about it as if it's even, you get what you started with. You f of negative x, or g of negative x would be x, or g of x. So if it was even, you would end up getting, when you put that in, when you substitute in a negative, you would get what you started with. Now if it was odd, you would get that g of negative x is negative g of x. And what I mean by that is I would get negative this whole thing, which gives me negative x squared plus x. So now we need to figure out if we're going to get one of those two. Actually, if we don't get either of those two, then we say it's neither. So we'll, we'll check this out and see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in negative x for x. 
I'm going to substitute in negative x for x again. So negative x to the second power, if you want to think of that, write it all out, negative x times negative x. I get minus minus, which gives me a plus. In the end, for this part right here, right here, I have negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. I have x times x, which gives me x squared. So my final answer is x to the second plus x. Actually, that's not the same as either of the two things that we have on the side, so we say that this is neither. So for my last example, I have h of x equals x squared plus 1. So um, if this was even, you would get h of negative x is equal to h of x which would mean that whenever you made, for every x that you made negative, you would get what you started with. Now if it was odd, you would get h of negative x equals negative h of x. What that would mean is that your final answer would be x squared plus one, but every sign would be changed. So we're gonna see if we get either of those two answers. If we do not get either of those two answers, then we're gonna say it's neither. So substituting in negative x, I end up getting h of negative x is equal to negative x squared plus 1. If you want, you can write it out as I did with the previous one. You don't have to do that. Um, so I have negative x times negative x. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. x times x gives me x squared. So I end up getting x squared plus 1. So if you look at the stuff I wrote on the side, by the way, you don't need to write that every time, but if it helps you, do it. And I'll notice that I got the same thing that I started with, actually, which means that this is an even function.